Hey there all you good people, I'm Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. Today we're taking a look at the Ramworks 4 kit from Ultimate Micro. We'll take a look at what comes inside the box, we'll put it together for you, then we'll show you what it can do for your Apple IIe. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. The RamWorks 4 is a RamWorks 3 compatible memory expansion card for the Apple IIe series. It's an aux slot board that adds 4 megabytes of RAM to your machine. Now the card achieves this by using all new parts and a modern design that allows it to be smaller than the original RamWorks 3 and it should allow it to uh, have a longer lifespan than the original card. So if you need a huge RAM disk for your Apple IIe or maybe you need more space for uh, Apple Works or you got one of those little, uh, those little cool VGA adapters from uh, Plum and Voice Loft that you want to put on there but you don't have a, an original RAM Works 3 to do it, this will uh, do the job for you pretty well. Now this comes as a kit, not a pre-assembled card, so you get the old school uh, you know, hacker maker experience of putting the, the device together yourself. Um, Ultimate Micro did this for a couple reasons. One because it's really fun to put the things together, but two, to save cost, keep the price down for uh, those of us who want to use these cards. So let's take a look at uh, what comes in the kit and uh, show you all the bits and pieces, and then after that we'll show you putting it together. Full disclosure, I received a preview kit ahead of a general release for the purpose of this video. All right, so let's take a look at the, everything that comes in the kit. Uh, first and foremost, uh, very important, is the uh, the instructions. This is typical Ultimate Micro Fair. Uh, very well designed, well ordered, uh, detailed. Shows you uh, everything that comes in the kit here, so that you know you can check your check your bits and pieces bag to make sure that you have everything in the kit. Uh, and then the instructions are very step by step, very ordered, and uh, give you everything you need to do it. You know, if you uh, follow the instructions to the letter, you should be just fine in putting this together. And you know, I'm a I'm an electronics novice, so that remains to be seen. We'll put this together in a minute and see how well uh, how well I do at that. All right, so here's the first piece of the kit. This is the uh, PCB board. Um, Pretty well designed board here. It's nice and clean, um, and uh, of course you can see all the values and uh, all the uh, the designations where everything goes in the board. So that makes uh, assembling that uh, pretty easy. Of course that remains to be seen. We'll do that in a minute. And then in our goodie bag we got bits and pieces and parts and yum yums and stuff stuff. So let's look at that. Uh, here's the uh, the uh, Altero CPLD. This is the glue that does uh, all of the magic uh, on there. Let me see if we can adjust that so you can see it. Uh, no, it's not gonna. It's not gonna really work for us today. There you go. You can sort of see that the Altero Max chip. That's that's what does all the magic. Uh, all the glue. Um, on this wonderful piece of foam, we got our socket that uh, that goes in the board for the Al Altera. These are our RAM chips. These are two uh, two megabyte RAM chips, uh, uh, pre-designed and set into uh, socket boards, so you can put socket those and put that together uh, real easy. Some uh, logic uh, logic tips. I don't honestly, you know, because I'm an elect non electronics guy. I don't know what these are. Um, I could have looked it up ahead of time. They're they're latches or logic gates of some kind that again help with uh, with glue. I would I would presume it helps with uh, addressing for these newer chips to help those uh, you know latch onto the Apple II bus uh, better. Um, there's our sockets for going in the board over there. Uh, other bits and pieces, we got tons of cabassers. Apparently, you need 14 of those guys. We've got uh, three of these uh, smaller or uh, other capacitors here. Uh, this guy's a fuse. Uh, of course, it's fusible length type of thing. So you know, if you do something wrong, it should trip and uh, prevent you from frying things. Uh, resistors for uh, for different things. Um, again, uh, I know what I know. The resistors. I don't know what they do. We're just going to put it in the board and see what happens. Um, LEDs to uh, show you for both power and activity, so you can tell what it's doing and when it's on. And uh, these are little connector headers. These go on the back of the card. Uh, allow you to connect um, to connect uh, RGB boards and other things uh, in the uh, classic RamWorks three fashion. 
So yeah, uh, of course, when you're uh, when you get this, you want to make sure you check your kit. Uh, the folks at Ultimate Micro are really fastidious uh, and good about putting all their bits and pieces in their kits. But just in case something got missed, you want to double check the kit. Uh, obviously, against you know the list there of all the parts that come with the kit to make sure you got everything. So we already checked our kit ahead of time. I got everything in here. So now we're going to go ahead and put this together. All right, now it's time to get to work. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and follow through the instructions here. I might zip ahead a couple times. And I apologize in advance if you hear a little noise in the background. It is Ohio in the summer while I'm doing this. So it's about 9 billion degrees outside. And our air conditioning unit is moving, you know, at about 15 quadrillion miles an hour to try to keep up with that heat. So. All right, so the first step here is to uh, gotta clean all the gold pads on the bottom of the PCB here. So uh, best way to do that is just with an eraser. Uh, the big, fat, thick erasers about that size work better, but this is what I got, so I'm gonna use that. All right, now that we got that cleaned, we have to add the uh, the uh, 20 and 28 pin dip sockets in here. Now, of course, uh, like all sockets, as you can see, there is a notch on the one inside there. If you look carefully on the board, we also have near pin one, we got a tiny little notch, see? In each of those up there and there. That means that the notches on these go generally in that direction. Can you see the notch there? So that's how that's supposed to go. The easiest way to do this is to put all four of these in the board, flip it over, and then do all four at one time with the board flat against the table. So we'll go ahead and do that next. All right, now that we got those in there, the next step is to put in the 68-pin uh, uh, PLCC socket. Uh, again, you know, making sure that's clean on the back and that uh, when you put this in uh, here, you're uh, making sure to um, get the notch aligned correctly. So let's take a look at that. We need to get it out of our little fuzzy fuzz here. So uh, these always have a what's called a cut corner or, you know, a little... little uh, angular corner here. These are all normal normal corners here, but this one's a little off. This is our pin one indicator, our notch indicator. If you look at this guy, that is indicated as going right up here, so we need to make sure we orient that correctly. So let's get that put in there. Uh, being a little belligerent, hold on. There we go. And we flip it over it and solder it to the back. All right, we got that in there. Looks nice and pretty. Next step is to install the fuse. The fuse is, uh, fuse is this little guy right here, and it goes right here in F1. Any orientation is okay, just stick it in there. All right, and now that those, uh, that uh, little guy is in there, uh, pretty nice and snug, and I went ahead and clipped the leads off the back of that uh, now because they'll, they'll be in my way for the next step. Um, the next uh, step is to take the 310 microfarad capacitors, these little tiny guys, and put them in the specific positions, which are, I believe are this one, that one, and that one. As you can see, they're specifically marked. The uh, positive side is uh, marked with the uh, solid white area. And uh, on these specific capacitors, the positive side of the capacitor is the longer leg. So you can see the longer leg here. Uh, it is very important to get these guys in the right direction. If you put them in backwards like this and you power this up, you will have little poppy explosion badness and that's not what we want to have. So let's get those put in next. Before I solder these in, I did want to show you a really quick trick on these. When you're putting in multiple, multiple pieces in one step, it's good to put it in through the front side, then flare the legs out. That way you can get uh, multiple pieces in here simultaneously. As you can see, uh, flared legs, flared legs, flared legs. It allows me to put all of those in and then they don't fall out of the board when I flip it upside down. All right, we got them in there, 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 and there, and that's awesome. The next step is the resistors. Uh, there's three of them. I'll put them in frame there real, for you real quick. Two of the one kind and one of another. And they go in, uh, you know, there, there, and there um, for the function that resistors do. Uh, looks to me, doing a quick path 
trace visually that this resistor goes to that, this resistor. Those are where the LEDs go, so it looks like these resistors bring down the uh, bring down the current a little bit so the LEDs don't draw too much current or they're not too bright or something like that. Uh, this, re I don't know what that resistor does. I'm not a circuit, uh, circuit designer. So So I'm not absolutely certain, but it's supposed to be in there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, stick all those in there. All right, we've got our resistors in place over there. Uh, next step is put the LEDs in. Uh, LEDs are, uh, of course, diodes. So that means they only uh, move current in one direction. And so you have to be careful. It's very hard to see on camera here, but uh, the diode has a flat edge on it. And the flat edge corresponds over here to the flat edge uh, on the uh, PCB drawing there. So you, when you put those in, you may make sure the flat edge matches the flat edge, uh, and uh, that makes sure that the polarity is correct. So we will go ahead and put that in there next. All right, the LEDs are in place. Now the instructions state that the power should be green and that the DRAM access should be red, but I thought that was backwards um, in my personal aesthetic opinion. Uh, just. Uh, from years of dealing with electronics, I like the red to be power and uh, the green here are dealing with computers, not really electronics. The green is usually an access light. And you know, when you're looking on the inside of the of the Apple IIe, there's a red power light in there. Uh, so I don't know, it just it made sense to me. So I put the red there and the green there. Uh, so next we have to put all 14 of these in. Um, this is where that flaring trick becomes really important. So uh, these just, uh, these uh, 14 uh, little uh, like, Tenth microfarad ceramic power filtering capacitors that go in those those holes as the instruction state. So let's get those put in next. All right, there we go. We got all the filter caps in, and we got uh, got uh, the back of the board all all the traces snipped. And you can see my awful awful soldering there. I have to admit I'm not very good at that. Um, so the next step is to uh, get the header strips put in. These are the RGB uh, header strips that allow you to. Uh, put an RGB card or adapter on the back of this. Now, as is uh, classic Ramworks 3 fashion, these guys go on the back side. So make sure you do that right when you put those on. So let's do that next. All right, we've got the rear headers on there. That's pretty good. Now we got to clean the board uh, because I'm using the solder with the flux on it, which is what's uh, suggested. And you're actually supposed to use real flux with it, but I didn't have it. So uh, you need to get all that gunk off there. So the next step is to clean the crud out of the board. Uh, use a to toothbrush, uh, some dish soap, a little uh, hot water, and you scrub the crud out of it. And when you're done, you make sure you get it super, super dry before you continue. You don't want any liquid underneath any of those pieces and parts there uh, before you continue or else, uh, you know, shorts might happen and that's bad. So we'll go ahead and get this cleaned up and uh, when I'm back, then we'll uh, we'll get to putting the uh, the integrated circuits in there. Singing in the rain, I'm singing in the rain. All right, now that we have that all put together and we got it dried out, we have to have uh, our static protection out. I've got a static bag down, and I've got my wrist strap on because we are going to be dealing with the ICs. These guys are very sensitive to static discharge. Um, if you don't have the ability to discharge, to uh, you know, have all this fancy stuff. Um, touch the uh, side of a, uh, of a computer that's plugged in. Uh, that will uh, ground any charge off of you and reduce the uh, reduce likelihood you're going to burn your chip out. So, um, yeah, basically these just go in the sockets. Uh, that goes in there that way because it's got the notch in this corner that matches the notch. And uh, these guys uh, have uh, notch notifications on them. You know, they got their dots and stuff that match the notches on the chips there. So, yeah, we just got to get those stuck in there. We'll do that next. All right, there we go. Everything put together and fully assembled. Uh, of course, when you put these in, make sure you check these uh, these chips here. They look very, very similar, but they are different. You'll note that uh, right here at the bottom, it tell you it'll tell you the series number of chip, and you need to make sure you match those up before you put those in. The notches on these are high, kind of hard to see. I was expecting them to be on the side of the of, you know the green little PCB adapter, but actually it's on the side of the chip itself. So make sure you get that aligned correctly. Now that we have all that put together, you're going to want to go through and double check and make sure you have everything in the right spot, in the right orientation, uh, pointed in the right direction, soldered in the right spot before you continue because if you got something wrong, you're probably going to have a bad day. Uh, everything looks good uh, to me here, so next step, put it in the Apple II and test it out. 
<laughs> it's alive. All right, so now we got this booted off up to one of the utility disks after we got the uh, got the device all put together and put in there. And uh, if we take a look at the screen there, your RAM works has 4,096K of memory. That is four megabytes, folks. That shows you that, hey, this card works a dream. Um, while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and go into the RamWorks memory test, which is option one here, and let's uh, let's see what this thing does. Um, well, we're running a basically a RamWorks 3 clone, so we're gonna go ahead and hit three and see what it does. Well, it's uh, it's going and testing through, so let's uh, let's see what happens on the other side. Oh, look, the status light's blinking there. It's uh, definitely testing the RAM all right. Oh, now we're into the actual RAM test. It's running the RAM passes. Something interesting to note here is the size. It only shows 1024K. It looks like the built-in uh, or the uh, the tool that came with the original RAM works can't detect the extra RAM. That's okay though. I'm told that uh, that the folks at Ultimate Micro are working with uh, the community to create an updated version of this that will be able to test all the RAM in their card. Well, I think that's a positive test. So let's see what happens after we uh, cancel out of the test here. Yep, there's the 80 column display. That's working correctly. What's next? Yep, double high res vertical bars. Yeah, well, that looks like it's working to me. Well, I am a total hack job at soldering, and I managed to put this thing together on the first run through. So that, uh, that gives this card high, uh, high marks right out of the gate. The instructions for the card are typical fare for Ultimate Micro. They're really well written, they're really detailed, and uh, they teach you exactly what you need to do to put it together so you don't screw it up. Uh, the usage of the card is pretty straightforward. Uh, you use it like you would any other RamWorks 3 card, just to add tons of RAM to your, to your Apple II. Um, and uh, works just like you know a standard 80 column card too if, you, if that's really all you want it for. Uh, the programs you, uh, you would use with this card just simply see it and use it. There's really nothing you have to do to the card itself to make it work so that's a, that's a bonus. Um, the card test passed or the card passed every test that I threw at it. Um, programs, applications, the test app that's running back here. It just works, which is a miracle seeing how bad I am at soldering and how blobbed the solder are, uh, solder points are on the back of that card. But that's me and not the card. Final thoughts? This is an awesome card that gives you gobs of RAM for your Apple IIe. It's a reliable uh, device. It works perfectly right out of the gate. It's affordable. And on top of all of that, it is fun to put together. It is a great starter project for those uh, looking to uh, get familiar with electronics work or how, you know, to do maker things and put stuff together yourself. So if you need more RAM for your Apple IIe and you're looking for a card to do it, the RAM works for from uh, Ultimate Night Micro gets my seal of approval. It's a really cool way to do that, and it's better than buying an old uh, RamWorks 3 that's, uh, you know, 20 or 30 years old. Well, that's all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button or subscribe, and remember, 8 bits are all you need. I was, we were well into computers long before Windows came along, and uh, uh, Apple, and my wife was intrigued with the whole Apple idea, so she did Apple then. Well, that's good to hear. We're uh, we're in very Apple-friendly channel here on Joe's Computer Studio. So, time for the machine to allow you to see those graphics in you know all of their 4,096 color glory. That's great. But the downside to that is that uh, these things are 30 years old now, and CRT monitors, as we all know, do not age well. The flybacks die. Capacitors.